In this video lesson, we'll investigate the presidents of the Gilded Age and the rise of the Populist Party. In 1880, the Republicans nominated James A. Garfield, a man from Ohio who had risen to the rank of Major General in the Civil War, as his running mate, a notorious stalwart who was a supporter of Roscoe Conkling, was chosen by the name of Chester A. Arthur from New York. The Democrats chose Winfield Hancock, a Civil War general who had appealed to the South during his fair treatment of it during Reconstruction, and a veteran who had been wounded at Gettysburg, thus appealing to veterans. Garfield wins, but dies soon after from a gunshot wound to his head. He was shot by a deranged office seeker named Charles Gateo and survived 11 weeks until he succumbed to his injuries. Vice President Chester A. Arthur will assume the presidency. The Pendleton Act of 1883 made campaign contributions from federal employees illegal and established the Civil Service Commission to make appointments to federal jobs on the basis of competitive examinations. This act is actually called the Magna Carta of Civil Service Reform and is responsible for reining in some government corruption and the most blatant re abuses. The Pendleton Act partially divorced politics from patronage but helped drive politicians into marriages of convenience with big business leaders. The Blaine Cleveland Mudslingers of 1884. James G. Blaine became the Republican candidate in the next election. The Democrats chose Grover Cleveland as their candidate, but received a shock when it was revealed that he might have been the father of an illegitimate child. The campaign of 1884 was filled with perhaps the lowest mudslinging in history between two politicians. The contest depended on how New York chose, but unfortunately, one foolish Republican insulted the race, faith, and patriotism of New York's heavily Irish population, which was also very heavily Democratic. And as a result, New York votes for Cleveland, which makes the difference between him being elected and not being elected. Grover Cleveland becomes the first Democratic president since Buchanan, 28 years earlier. He tries to help veterans get their pensions. He also named two former Confederates to his cabinet, attempting to narrow the chasm between the North and the South. By 1881, the Treasury had a surplus of $145 million, most of it having come from the high tariff, and there was a lot of clamoring for lowering the tariff. Big industrialists opposed lowering the tariff because it meant lower prices for consumers and less protection for monopolies. Cleveland ends up lowering the tariff, which means he lowered the duties on imports and exports. Republicans and House Democrats also fight over power. Democrats tried to obstruct all House business by refusing to answer any roll calls. Thomas Reed, the Republican Speaker of the House, told them that if they were physically there, that business would continue. The Billion Dollar Congress refers to all the bills passed, such as pensions, for the Civil War veterans. Congress also passed the McKinley Tariff Act of 1890, which boosted rates to their highest peacetime level ever. This continued to increase the debt of the farmers who had to buy manufactured goods from very high-priced American industrialists. As a result, the Populist Party emerges in 1892, backed by the disgruntled farmers. Farmers wanted a shorter workday, immigration restriction, unlimited coinage of silver, government ownership of the railroads, telegraph, and phones. At Andrew Carnegie's Homestead Steel Plant near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 300 Pinkerton detectives were sent in to crush the strike by steel workers who were angry over pay cuts in the Homestead strike. After troops were summoned, the strike and the union were eventually broken. Grover Cleveland won the election of 1892, but as soon as he stepped into the presidency, the Depression of 1893 broke out. 
It was the first such panic in the new urban and industrial age, and it caused very much outrage and hardships on the people. This completed the almost very predictable every 20-year cycle of panics during the 1800s. Panics had occurred during 1819, 1837, 1857, 1873, and now in 1893. About 8,000 American businesses collapsed within six months, and dozens of railroad lines went into the hands of receivers. The value of money became an issue again, with the argument over hard money, silver, versus soft money, paper, continuing. Cleveland was embarrassed at having to resort to J.P. Morgan to bail the United States out of the Depression. J.P. Morgan agreed to lend the United States government $65 million in gold and charged them a $7 million commission. The loan temporarily helped restore confidence in the nation's finances. Republicans won congressional elections as a result in the election of 1894, 244 seats, to the Democrats, 105 seats. Although um, President Cleveland did do much to try to reestablish some limits to abuses of civil service, he also failed to cope with the economic crisis. And we'll discuss the impact of each of the presidents during the Gilded Age in our future discussions in class.